how would you know how something operates inside the world? How do you know how it, what it might be like to be that thing? Um, and when you're designing for when you're designing for another species, but a non-human species, you have to design for something that you're familiar with or you you have direct access to. Um, otherwise, it, you're just abstracting the humanness out on this kind of continu continuum between less and less human before you become a slug or a worm or, or something that we can't really understand. And when we understand horses or cats or something like that, we are understanding it from a human perspective and abstracting our own understanding of the world out on this continuum away from human animal into otherness. This is, the, this is one prototype in a, a series of prototypes. So it starts early on with just two low res webcams, cheap webcams stuck on the top, kind of pointing out either way. Um, and then it starts to develop, which is what I presented at Stanford. And then it starts to develop a little bit further. And, and as we test it with people, they, they say things like, well, it's, it's good, but could it be more horse-like? You know? And then we start, I started to look at why that might be. And, and what we find is a long kind of cultural history of wearing masks and becoming something different. That when we put on a mask, we can behave slightly differently and we leave something behind. So uh, the horse's head, uh, equine eyes, it has these, uh, these two cameras. Uh, one on either side. Um, a horse's eye uh, is like a fish eye lens. It can see 180 degrees. So ALF is a lot wider than the human field of vision. Um, it can So it can see 180 degrees across it, like this. And the two eyes cross over at the front. So you get this kind of cone of uh, depth at the front where the, the eyes can process things a little bit differently at the front than it can at the side. Um, so this is taking two 180 degree fisheye lens cameras uh, and it takes it down into the computer which processes that stuff and then back up the cable into uh, a virtual reality headset inside. So it kind of renders the, that vision onto the, the human eye. So it's kind of like taking your eyes out and putting them on the side of your head with, with fisheye. The computer is really important because uh, a horse doesn't see the same color range as a human does. So a horse sees a, what we would call a dichronic color range. So it sees between blue and yellow uh, as a spectrum uh, and doesn't see contrast in the same way as a, a human eye does. So the computer processes all of the red out and some of the contrast out and makes it slightly uh, a different aesthetic than, than the human eye sees. It, inside the headset, there's the uh, virtual reality headset, so uh, kind of commercial uh, virtual reality headset. And I'm, I'm taking live feeds from the, the two cameras on either side, which uh, means that if I kind of, inside the helmet, if I cross my eyes and I look at my nose, I'm really focusing out the front of the helmet and seeing things in front of me. So to be able to create that effect inside the helmet, I have to kind of cross my eyes and look at the edges of the, the camera. And then I can see the same thing in both eyes as I do as a human. And, but if I look just straight ahead, what I'm seeing is vision coming in from both sides. So by looking straight ahead uh, and not changing my uh, human body underneath, what I'm seeing is out of, of either side. I think that there's something really important in the kind of ridiculous uh, and the funny and the playful that that when you are at play you are more open to different possibilities of the world so th this is for me I, I, I kind of talked a about the the equine eyes as a as a tool for a while that this is this would be a tool to test how people might design for horses or a tool for if you are designing a new stable that you that you could then put this on and you could go inside and you could see what the horse might see inside the stable and that it was a very functional object and that it, in that way it could be a kind of right or wrong. And I stopped using that language a while ago and started talking about it as a toy uh, because a toy gives a space to play and gives a kind of openness. So I talk about it as a toy to, to kind of open spaces of thinking differently or thinking through problems. For me, this is a method of 
thinking through something, which is a kind of anti-scientific method of experience in the world. So I talk a lot about in my work about the idea of tacit knowledge. So this idea that, that there's things that you can't necessarily explain to people, you just have to kind of experience it and show it. People are wowed in the space of it. So when they try it on, there is a very visceral response to it. You know, it's, it's a, oh, I didn't know. And I can tell people and I can describe to people how a horse sees the world. Um, and you can draw pictures and diagrams, but the embodied experience of hoarseness is, is different and does something different because experiencing the world is a bodily thing rather than an abstracted thing through words or images or pictures. So for me, it's very satisfying to see the kind of wow factor when you, 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 somebody puts it on. But then there's this other bit of it, which is when the changes happened and you get, you speak to people maybe a few months afterwards and they say, well, yeah, I did that thing. And then next time I saw a horse or a dog or a dolphin or a slug, I thought slightly differently about what, the way that that, that creature, the way that that non-human animal might be experiencing the world around it and that it might have different kind of sensory apparatus and that it doesn't experience the world in the same way as, as I do. So for me, the, the project is about opening a space for reflection and a space for consideration of other things in the world. And when you have that space to kind of think through, through things and, and not to make things less complicated, but to make things more complicated. When you make things more complicated and you bring in more things and more and more things around you, then you start to see a larger picture and the interconnectedness of, of things around you. So the idea, ideal of this isn't a kind of a horse's head that we can sit in a front room and, and kind of experience what a horse might see if it was stood inside a, a front room or a lab or, or any of that kind of stuff. It's, you know, if we can take this out to where a horse is and we can be with a horse in a field and experience a field from a horse's point of view, I think is, is quite interesting because that's a different environment and comes with lots of different kind of complexities. There's a there's a problem in, in the work in that it is uh, very optocentric. So it's, it's about seeing as a primary sense because humans see as a primary sense first. You know, we understand and orientate ourselves uh, through sight and position ourselves in the world against other things using our sight. But other non-human animals, that's not necessarily their primary sense. So something like a dog would have smell as its primary sense. So you, it, it might have poorer eyesight but higher smell and hearing and those sorts of things so how might that dog experience the world around it and it's probably not sight it's probably something something different that and if we can give a space for people to think about those things they, then they will think about the non-human animal slightly differently and their relationship with their animal slightly differently hopefully as a designer you kind of inscribe your politics into things and that's a real big power. Uh, as a designer, you are uh, kind of predicting a, a future uh, and making for this future. So as if you're a product designer, you're kind of looking at cultural trends and you're making this kind of future. And when you do that, you put your politics and bias into the things around you. And that plays out in lots of uh, interesting and obscure kind of ways. But as a designer, you need to be aware of your own politics. So, and your own cultural biases and, and what you're putting into things. If we can use design to kind of open some of that stuff out slightly and, uh, and make a more inclusive environment for anim animals at different times, uh, human and non-human animals, um, then I think that that could be a, an important thing to do.